steam locomotives in miniature at the steam workshop. And today for a change I'm working on my 5 inch gauge sterling single. I didn't build it and whoever built it made a very good job of it, it is beautifully made, except for one or two small yet maybe significant problems. And one of the problems is in the smoke box, possibly the worst place to have a problem on a miniature steam locomotive. It's full of pipes and things like that and my hands are too big to comfortably fit inside the smoke box. Which is a problem to start with because there are three bolts that hold the chimney down onto the smoke box and I just couldn't undo them. But thankfully John, who works at the steam workshop, has smaller hands than me and he expertly removed them. The chimney has to come off for a couple of reasons, one is to remove some parts from inside the smoke box. But I think to start with I'll move to the other end of the boiler. This is the view of the back head and here is the part I have the problem with. This is the regulator and it's a disc in a tube type regulator. A regulator on a standard British locomotive normally swings across the back head from left to right or right to left. This one has a lever that you pull in and out out to open the regulator and in to close the regulator, which is more like the design on an American locomotive. I can't get the regulator out from the back head end, it needs to come out from the front, but the disc in a tube principle is a sliding piston in a tube that uncovers holes with steam at the other side of the holes, and this steam then enters the tube which is connected directly to the steam chest, and the more you slide the piston the more holes are uncovered and the more steam gets admitted to the cylinders. Back to the other end, I've taken these parts out of the smoke box. Well, to be honest, no I haven't. John did it. This chimney reinforcing mounting plate was very difficult to remove. I just couldn't get my fingers in to undo the three bolts that first of all went through the petticoat pipe, then the plate, all the way through into the chimney. And the petticoat pipe is all cut away because it's too tight to fit. And because the blast pipe is really close to this very long chimney, it's completely unnecessary to have one of these. You will find this next bit very, very interesting. It's called Fatakdi powder. Well, it's really alum powder. Quite a few viewers have asked me how to remove steel bolts in non-ferrous metal parts. I don't mean with a spanner, I mean when the part is broken off in the hole. And in this case, it is a tap that's broken off in the hole. So I'm going to use this alum powder mixed with water to hopefully dissolve the steel part and leave the brass part intact. And to speed up the reaction, I'm going to boil it up in a stainless steel pan, put the part in and see what happens. After I've finished the boiling process, I think I'll leave the part in the alum powder liquid and see whether it dissolves the tap. We shall see if it works. This part, which is made of gun metal, is the support for the back of the regulator. And it is also what is called a stuffing gland which will stop the steam from the boiler escaping where the rod goes through it. And I need to make a gasket for this. This is quite a large hole punch and it's more or less the right size but a little bit tight. And it punches out the gasket hole in one and then I just enlarge it very, very slightly with a drum sander. The next part of the operation is to hold the component against the hole in the gasket and draw around it using a pencil. I'm doing this at high speed just to prevent any viewers from falling into a coma. I'm now about to cut this out, but I'm going to cut on the outside of the line, so the gasket will be slightly larger than I need it to be. Then, I hold the part against the gasket one more time, and trim it accurately using a pair of scissors around the edge of the component. In this clip I'm holding the component, complete with its gasket, firmly against the back head. And what I'm doing is using a twist drill to make four holes in the gasket material to match the four holes in the regulator gland and this will allow me to reattach the regulator gland to the bush on the back of the boiler. I'm not just doing this job because the regulator was tight, I'm doing it because I did notice that the original builder had used steel Allen cap head bolts in here, and I was really unhappy about that because I've been there many times, you put them in and they look great and they're very strong, a few years down the line you try and get them out, and they won't come out, all that happens is the Allen key makes a mess of the hexagon down into the bolt. Then the next course of action is to drill them out, which is not something I want to do. So before I paint this engine and finally finish it, I'm going to fit some stainless steel Allen cap head bolts to replace these ordinary steel ones. 
But for now, I'm putting the original bolts back in place temporarily because I don't have any Allen Caphead stainless steel bolts. At this late stage, I would also like to say that I also removed the steel bolts from inside the smoke box on the wet header. But it was impossible to video this because all you could see was my hands inside the smoke box. The good news is, they all came out okay, but with some difficulty. They were very tight and quite rusty and they heaved a great sigh of relief once I'd removed the last one and they were all sat on the bench. In this clip I'm re-tightening the gland nut and I'm using a special spanner mainly because I forgot my barco. Can you believe it? I left it on the bench at home. I felt positively impotent without my barco spanner. I won't do that again. But somehow as the job progressed I did get by without it. I'm using a small chrome vanadium spanner to just tighten these lock nuts and now the regulator is beautiful. It feels absolutely marvellous. Before I did this small but important job, the regulator was so stiff that when I moved it, I was in danger of dragging the engine off the track. This was just one of the jobs on this engine that needed doing in my opinion. Now it's done, everything's good. The sun's come out, the birds are singing, and it's a lovely day. Well, no, in reality, it's raining outside. But meanwhile, here at the asylum, life is wonderful all the time. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.